A wonderful good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to you out there from the Prime XPT Trading Academy, and welcome to today's episode of that crypto show. Before we start, a uh, quick risk disclaimer. As always, this webinar is brought to you and provided by the PrimeXPT.com research team. Guys, we are all experts here. Please don't take anything as financial financial advice you hear uh, you hear on this webinar or other webinars our mission really is to make you a better trader to make you a better informed trader that is able to make his own uh, well-informed trading decisions my name is Artik and I have only the pleasure of being your host today I am also the head of trading education here at primexpt.com if you're not doing so already, please take a minute and follow us also on Twitter at px underscore academy to get uh, frequent updates about upcoming webinars to see what we are uh, posting every day in terms of analysis of things happening on the crypto markets. Also get in touch with us either by email under academy at primexpt.com and drop us an email. We will always answer every single email that reaches us. And who knows if your question is asked by enough people, it might also be ta be taken answered on uh, live here on this show, on that crypto show every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Great. If you are watching live right now on either Twitch or YouTube, just drop us a message on the chat. And if we still have time later, we will answer that as well. Great. Uh, two things we want to talk about today. First, of course, we are going to have a look on at Bitcoin. And we're going to talk about uh, up there at the moment what happened and the likelihood of uh, things happening next and, and what the promising uh, way is to position yourself in a market sentiment like this. Uh, after this, we will talk about how to win more trades, how to be better at winning trades. And for this, we will talk about a concept called a risk reward ratio, which is one of the main pieces of a, a mature, a newly beginner trader and an institutional trader or professional trader out there. So stay tuned and uh, we'll have a thing or two to teach you today. All right, uh, as always, first, we're going to have a look at the fear and greed index for the crypto markets. It has been slowly rising over the last couple of days, really over the last week. And this, of course, is in line with what we saw here. Uh, this is a daily chart in Bitcoin. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days, uh, one week of only green candles. You remember after we slumped down below the twenty, uh, below the thirty thousand, uh, quite a recovery. Maybe today is going to be the eighth day. We are going to see a green candle. So let's see uh, what is up there. Uh, the, I remember last week the fear and greed index was somewhere around sixteen. So extreme fear. Uh, what does that mean uh, for me as a trader, for my day trading activities? I like to look at the sentiment of a crypto market, especially Bitcoin, to get an understanding uh, for what most traders out there are expecting. A sentiment of fear or even extreme fear means that the volatility to the downside is probably going to be much higher than to the upside. There are, of course, exceptions to this rule. And what you usually see is this is a lagging indicator. Lagging mean you'll see a rising market and then slowly the sentiment. And this is really what we are seeing here at the moment. Sentiment has been rising from 16 now to 32, which is still a negative bad sentiment uh, for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, but of course already much better. Um, in Normally uh, with a sentiment uh, in the fear or extreme fear region, I would choose to only trade short trades. However, since we are seeing that the sentiment is changing at the moment, I'm already considering uh, taking long trades as well. 
And if you've been following us a little bit, you know that we engage in long positions because we are, we're expecting this volatility breakout uh, slightly over 36,000. If you haven't been watching this, uh, all past episodes obviously are available on YouTube and Twitch. So maybe go there and see what we were talking about the other day. Quick look at the news this morning. And yeah, very typical of a changing sentiment. If you would go back for a week, you would only find or most likely only find negative news. Uh, saying things like Bitcoin is going down to 25, Bitcoin is going down to 22 or 20,000, or maybe even Bitcoin is going down to zero. So that is also changing a little bit. So uh, again, here the news agencies are lagging. Uh, the news agencies are trying to feed us the news <laughs> we want to hear. So uh, we have a Bloomberg analyst uh, saying now we are more likely to move to 60,000 than drop further. That's very interesting because two weeks ago, I think they said the exact opposite. Another one here, uh, Bitcoin price prediction. Uh, Bitcoin is preparing to launch to 44,000. Uh, so that's an interesting one as well. Um, I don't know who that was here, but you know, it's like reflecting the current uh, miniature uh, micro sentiment. Uh, another one, DAD CEO says Bitcoin will be worth 1 million in less than 10 years. If you're a long term holder or hotler of Bitcoin, this is, of course, exactly the, the headline you want to see out there, uh, whether it's true or not. But it's very, very typical in a changing sentiment and Bitcoin cryptocurrencies are an asset class that where the sentiment can change really just within a day or a couple of days. And typically you'll see in news headlines like this, which also brings me to the conclusion that at the moment uh, we can really trade in both directions uh, with, uh, uh, with, uh, with an emphasis on long trades. Great. So what we're seeing right now here in Bitcoin is the following. We've seen really a meteoric rise, I must say, and we're seeing a little bit of exhaust, exhaustion patterns here now at 40,000. Now, uh, look at what happened here not so long ago, mid of June. Uh, we had kind of the same pattern here. Uh, you see this candle here looks a little bit like what we're seeing here today. So um, if we should stay like this. I mean, the day, of course, obviously is still long. Uh, so there's plenty of room still to move to the upside or downside and the candle changing. But this could be an indication of a topish pattern with Bitcoin first making its way down again. And how could we trade something like this? But first of all, again, guys, no financial advice, make your own decisions. But how would I typically trade personally something like this? Um, it's a very good trading setup in terms of risk, risk and reward ratio. Uh, why is that so? And what do I mean by risk reward ratio? Well, a risk reward ratio is something all professional traders work with to give them, mathematically speaking, the best odds in winning a trade. So if I decide to, for example, say like, okay, I think we are going to pause here first. I think Bitcoin is going down from around 40,000 first to 36,000 again. So if I just uh, make the assumption now that I'm shorting exactly here at 40,000 and Bitcoin goes down here to really 36,000, excuse my really bad drawing skills here, uh, that would mean that I have 40,000 minus 36,000, around about 4,000 US dollars I would have in winnings per Bitcoin traded, that is. Now, uh, as I always uh, propagate here, for every trade, you should not only have a target area where the trade could be going, you also need a stop loss. So, and this is the really, really one fundamental thing that differentiates a, a retail trader, so-called retail trader, meaning a, a trader that trades his own pockets that maybe has a thousand or two thousand or five or ten thousand uh, uh, US dollars in trading capital uh, that is new to the whole thing, uh, that doesn't do that for maybe plans or living. 
uh, what you usually see is they engage in and they will very soon close the trade again. So maybe, uh, you know, we are right here. Uh, we ditch on 40,000 and then it goes down to 39,000. So at 39,000, the retail trader uh, might close the trade already again. But if we are wrong and Bitcoin shows us another two, three, four, five days of green candles and we go all the way up here to 45,000, maybe we shouldn't be in that trade anymore, obviously, because we have a negative risk reward ratio. If we are expecting Bitcoin to go down to, for example, 39,000 from 40,000, we have a reward of potentially 1,000 US dollars a movement. So if we set our stop loss, for example, if we plan to access the trade at 45,000, we would risk $5,000 to win $1,000. And you can uh, mathematically express this as a risk reward ratio. And uh, I think this, this graph really shows as well here. I think, uh, I hope you can see that uh, good. Let me maybe uh, zoom in a little bit here. Uh, I like this is better. So in this case, in order to get 1,000 US dollars in reward or $1 in reward, we have to risk $5,000 or five. So our risk, risk reward ratio is five to one. We are risking five times as much money as we are getting if we were correct about. And if this is always our risk reward ratio, we would need to be 83% of the time correct with our trade assumptions just to break even, not to win, to break even. And professional traders, hedge funds and so forth, usually they are right between 52 to maybe 65% of the time. So with this risk reward ratio, you would basically tell, hey, I'm better than almost every professional out there with my trading decisions. Maybe you are. Well, then you can, of course, have a risk reward, risk reward ratio like this, uh, where you need a win rate of 83%. But we can put favor more into our odds. If we, for example, say, well, okay, we want to sell here at 40,000 and we want to make the move all the way down to 36,000. So we want to earn $4,000 and we put our stop loss up here at $44,000. Then we would have a risk reward ratio of one to one. We are risking $4,000 to earn $4,000. So it's a coin flip. Yeah, Risk reward ratio, we want to earn 1,000. We want to uh, risk 1,000. So in order to break in, to not lose money, we would need uh, uh, we would need to be fifty percent correct of the time. So this is basically a coin flip situation. Yeah, this is like playing roulette in the casino where you bet on black or where you bet on red, with the exception that a roulette you also have a zero, the green zero that destroys those odds for you. If we want to move things further in our direction, maybe we should aim on earning twice as much as we are risking. So going back to our example, and let me quickly already delete what I drew in here. If I want to earn $4,000 because I want to uh, capture the move down from 40,000 to 36,000, and I'm risking only $2,000. So my stop loss would be up here at 42,000. Then my risk reward ratio is one to two. I'm risking 2,000. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm risking 2,000 to get 4,000. So I'm risking one, but I can gain two. Yeah, I'm risking 2,000. I can gain double the amount of that, 4,000. If this is my risk reward ratio for every trade, I only need to be correct 33% of the time over all my trades in order to not lose money. So you can see the further this progresses. If I risk 1,000 to earn 5,000, 
yeah, a very favorable risk reward ratio. I only need to be correct 17% of the time. Now, the further you go down in your favorite trades, obviously you can take because setups where you can earn 50 times uh, the reward of uh, what you're risking are very, very rare out there. And probably you don't want to spend your days and weeks and months waiting for the perfect setup. If you do so, uh, it's very good. Uh, you're doing a lot of things right. But let's just say uh, we stick to the rule. We want to earn double of what we are risking. Then we just need to be 33% of the time correct. And for this, we need to be a bit patient because we need to wait for the setups where this is possible. And in my opinion, you usually have those setups when you are in an area uh, where, there, where there is support or resistance. So on the way up, uh, when there's an area of resistance, on the way down, when there's an area of support. So this line actually here, uh, da, 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 let me take this quickly. This one, of course, needs to be green now because it's a support likewise with this one. So maybe today I think like, okay, I think Bitcoin is going to sh show exhaustion. I expect that we are going down today. Maybe we're not going down uh, all the way to uh, 36,000. Uh, maybe it's going to be more something like 38,000. So uh, let's say I want to, uh, want to uh, uh, let's say 37,000. I don't expect it to go maybe all the way down here. Uh, so I would uh, take my short position up here. I would have my take profit $3,000 away. Uh, I'm, I'm under the assumption uh, I want to earn twice as much as I'm risking. I want to have my re risk reward ratio at two to one, at one to two, sorry. And so $3,000 in gains would mean I'm willing to risk $1,500. $40,000 plus $1,500 means I would be in this area up here at $41,500. And this, what you have to do then is you have to look at the chart and kind of think like, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, does that make sense? In my opinion, it does. Because what you're seeing here is, okay, if Bitcoin really continues through this resistance, it somewhat is likely that after we break the 40,000, after we break the 41,000, that it's going to continue and attack uh, this up here, the two uh, days moving average, which is uh, at around about 45,000 at the moment. So uh, it Absolutely, is a possibility if we pierce through here and we do it maybe with another large green candle that we're going to see the 45,000 uh, very, very soon or attack the 45,000, which, by the way, if we manage to retake this one would be an indication that the long-term bull market is still intact. If that is not happening, it's very likely that we see uh, people taking their profits from their long positions for now, and this would drive us slowly uh, slowly down again, uh, maybe in this area of 38, maybe 37, maybe we're even going to attack 36,000. But uh, the, the, my, my likelihood of this happening and me earning $3,000 while only risking $1,500 is mathematically speaking very much into my favor because I only with this setup, I only need to be correct 33% of the time in order to not lose money. If I'm correct 40% of the time, if I'm correct 50% of the time, I'm going to earn money with this, uh, which of course is by the end of the day, what we always want to achieve with trading. Nobody's trading to just, you know, break even or nobody, uh, nobody's trading to just earn a little bit of money or even lose money. We all want to earn money. So I could have done the setup and you see actually, and this is, this is very unique here and this candle you could have done this before like in this green big green candle if you would have placed a short trade up here yeah you probably it, it went down again this uh, you should, would have reached your target of three thousand dollars already and you can play this as long until the pattern breaks out to the top or until the pattern breaks down to the lower and tries to find a new area of stability to trade between so that's very, very favorable. And you can do this on all time frames. It's 
easier to do this on the daily charts, easier to do this on the hourly, four hour, maybe even 30 minutes charts. Uh, a little bit harder if you want to trade the one minute charts, five minute charts, but the concept is always the same. Instead of doing clickety, clickety, click, because we kind of have a feeling, you know, oh, it's going down and we might be right with our feeling. Uh, we need to get the mindset of a professional trader, which is I'm going to engage in a trade. Why am I going to engage in the trade? Because I think this area between 40 and 41,000 at the moment is too uh, too steep to overcome with just one move. I'm expecting that we pull down a little bit first again. So this is my, my hypothesis, my assumption of what is going to happen. Um, I'm correct. If, if this happens, I expect uh, that we see uh, see uh, areas around, let's say, 37,500 again. So, or 37,000. So I can gain $3,000 with this trade in Bitcoin. And in order to maintain my risk reward ratio of one to two, I need to set my stop loss one and a half thousand dollars away. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does make sense because if we pierce through here, uh, my hypothesis is that we are going even higher to the area of 45,000. Quite a simple concept, which allows you to be wrong more than you're right with your trades and still not lose money or even earn money. So very, very beautiful. It requires, however, that you stay patient until you see setups like this. And uh, this, by the end of the day, of course, is our task to, to show you oh, there is a setup like this or these are possible setups to trade. Again, please do your own due diligence. Uh, don't just follow blindly these trades. You have to do your, your own research. Uh, please, no financial advice. Uh, I'm just showing you from my expertise uh, what I expect to happen. But, you know, I'm, I'm wrong also sometimes, <laughs> obviously, uh, everybody is. All right, so we are 23 minutes in. Uh, I think uh, enough for today. I wish everybody a very safe training day. And if you have not done already so, remember also to claim your 50% deposit bonus. Uh, under your account margin, you go to margin, you go to account, and you type in the, pre, uh, the promo code Trading Academy, all written in capital letters. Click on activate, and you will get from Prime XPT a 50% deposit bonus on every deposit you are doing uh, in Bitcoin uh, until mid of October. So that's a nice way to get some extra margin for your trading, uh, kind of like uh, extra wheels on your bicycle. You remember when you learned riding the bicycle. We will see each other again tomorrow at 10 a.m. CET. Until then, have a great day and stay out, stay safe out there trading the markets. Take care and goodbye. See you guys tomorrow again.